Hey guys, Ash here from C4A Tech and welcome to the final part of my tips, tricks, hidden features and even the not so hidden features, the entire rundown of, of the software I found on the Galaxy S5. So like I just said, this is the final part which means there are two parts before this. If you guys haven't seen that already, you can get to those parts by clicking on the videos playing on screen right now or you can find direct links right below the like button in the description. So right now, picking up where we left off, the storage. So over here you can see what is using up your memory and you can also you can also format your SD card from here and then security. Well it's not recommended there are times that you might want to install an APK file that you download uh, to make sure that you're able to install the APK file which is similar to an exe file that you find uh, for Windows so if you want to install it then you need, you need to make sure that this is checked. If you have reactivation lock turned on, even after somebody uh, does a factory reset, they will not be able to activate your phone. So if you're just a little too paranoid, you can have that turned on. Now going into about device, uh, tapping on your build number seven times will enable the uh, developer options. So from developer options, you've got quite a few options here. Uh, for example, Windows animation scale, you can turn this off. Uh, let me just show you turn this off transitions and animated duration turn these off and your phone feels a little bit faster but you don't get any animations say for example the pop open animation that you see when an app opens up so i generally change this to 0.5 so the animation is still there but everything feels just a little bit snappier anyway you also have the option of switching uh, from dalvik runtime to android runtime ART is still experimental while well, yes theoretically it will improve the performance of, of your phone there is a reason why Google still says it's experimental so there might be some bugs I have used it on the Nexus 5 without any issues I'm yet to test it out on the Galaxy S5 uh, reports that I've read uh, are a little conflicted some people get great results with it some people run into a few bugs like a black screen when you try to wake your device and so on so unless you're sure of what you're doing don't change that and now we move on to the applications tab so with applications manager you get to see what applications you have what's on the sd card uh, what you've downloaded what's currently running and what's not so say for example es file explorer right now we have an option to move to sd card so when you download quite a few large games or something and you want to move it to the sd card because your internal storage is running out here's where you can do that from so going back default applications so if you do use different launchers you can choose between them from here and uh, out of the box there are two messaging apps that supported chat on is also available once you turn that on once you'll have three different messaging apps supported if you're going to use a different replacement messaging app you can come and change that over here so that's just a switch defaults it's a built-in feature of android kitkat so this is how samsung presents it and then you have other options like call options here so you get uh, notifications to pop up when an application is open. You also get in-call statuses and caller information. So showing when you check caller, show caller information, your recent activity like the last time you've spoken to them or uh, the last message you received or social network activity. If the contact is linked, these pop up when you're calling somebody. And from messages, you can set up a spam filter. So you can add certain phrases that would cause uh, the S5 to detect these messages as uh, spam or you can block unknown senders altogether. Uh, just like other Galaxy devices, the Galaxy S5 does support USB OTG or USB host functionality. So you need to get this uh, USB OTG cable which is sold separately. You can get these for about a dollar, a dollar fifty. I'll leave a link to Amazon uh, where you can get it from right in the description. So you just plug it in and you can now plug in a flash drive to the Galaxy S5 or you can plug in something like this a wireless receiver and now if you can use a mouse with your Galaxy S5 so you can use a keyboard as well this way if you do have a USB 3.0 port and you're using a micro USB 3.0 cable with your Galaxy S5 you might wonder why the transfer rates aren't great when you plug in and try to transfer stuff that's because it does not by default get connected in the usb3 mode so once you connect it you see connected as media device touch for the usb options so tap it and here you can see media device usb 
Only if you select this will your data speeds increase, you'll be able to transfer stuff faster. Also keep in mind that when the Galaxy S5 is running in USB 3.0 mode, it might affect your calls or data. And it's also worth noting that this mode gets automatically deactivated in 10 minutes. So right now, let's get to the gallery. So this is the gallery app. We've already seen how to uh, add stuff to the private mode. You can just slide from the left and you get a bunch of options. You can sort it by time, album, filter it by people. If you have uh, tags, scenery, documents, food, pets, and so on. You can also view connected devices. This is a theme that you're going to be seeing with all the apps here. Uh, any, any media servers that you might have will get detected with it, be it the gallery app or the music app or uh, the video app. So talking about the music app, let's quickly jump to the music app next. So this is the music app. It's been redesigned from the last time we saw it on the Galaxy Note 3. So you, uh, you've got the white background a little bit more in tune with KitKat. So it's still the same tabs that we've seen on ga uh, Galaxy devices in the past. You've got the music uh, square that lets you play music based on your mood. And you can get to folders and like I said, the devices. So any devices nearby, you can just uh, check that and play music from that. So these are DLNA servers basically that get detected and going into settings you've got sound alive that you can activate from here and you can uh, fine tune the audio to just the way you want it to. Lyrics, music auto, you can change the play speed and adapt sound. So adapt sound basically it lets you tailor the sound to your liking the way you want it to be. So you can turn that on from settings sound. All right, and then smart volume, which kind of equalizes the audio, keeps each track's volume uh, equal. So that's pretty much it when it comes to music. Next up, let's move on to the dialer. So you've got the three dot menu here. You can set your speed dial features from there. You've got your favorites and call logs. So with Samsung Galaxy devices, your messages will also be included in the call logs. You can change that. Uh, sorted differently and your contacts. So currently I've got a test contact here. So with Galaxy devices, you can like swipe to the right to call, swipe to the left to message, and you can also quickly move through letters by just uh, sliding to, to the right. And you can further sort it by just uh, moving a little to the left and then continuing to swipe. So if I had say contacts starting with K A or K E or something, I could filter it a little bit more and get to the contact that I wanted to. The keyboard supports smart dial, so I just need to type in 837 and that's test. And next up, let's get to the messages. So from the messages app, you can tap here to add priority senders. So uh, basically how that works is you just add a contact to priority. So that's always going to be here. So we always have a few people that we text a lot. So you can just select them uh, right from here. And that's pretty much it. And then we have scheduled messages. So how that works is, let me just control. Okay. Let's just type in test and now I've hit the three dot menu, hit schedule message, hit done. All right. Set, let's set it for tomorrow. Hit done and I hit send. So now if this message is scheduled, it doesn't go out till the time that I've set it and set it to go out. And if I just need to check which messages are uh, which messages I've scheduled already just hit the three dot menu schedule messages and there it shows I can go ahead cancel it delete it if I want it if I wanna so that's that you can change the font size here all right you can let it use the devices font size the one we set in the settings menu or you can have the messages app alone have different a, a different font size and uh, these are the messages settings so from here you can actually set up quick responses so you can add quick responses that's pretty self-explanatory and now let's move on to the camera app the camera app this time around does seem a little bit more refined uh, it's not that it's got any fewer features than last time around it's just that a lot of these features are buried into shot and more so you can take a picture and then you can choose best photo best face drama shot uh, all these options are available after you shoot it and uh, hitting download over here will also take you to Samsung's App Store where you get a few other shots that you can add. This is the 360 panorama mode and so on that you can add. 
and you've got a new virtual tour mode so right now this is something I just quickly captured here so this is my workspace right now so that's virtual tour for you you've got your panorama dual camera your beauty face and the auto mode apart from that you've got your settings over here and these two are actually customizable you can actually add a third shortcut over here so say for example you like switching between uh, 4k video and full hd a lot so just tap and hold it and add it over here uh, and uh, say for example you switch your resolution as well then tap and hold this so now these are your quick shortcuts and this is for selective focus it lets you uh, choose whether the focus is on the object that's close to the camera or the one that's far far behind or whether you want everything in focus you can set that up by turning this mode on and next up we've got the smart remote option yes the galaxy s5 still has an ir blaster on top so you can just let me just set up so when you're setting it up you can just select which genre interests you so say for example i like just sci-fi and fantasy i've said that and sports again okay so now it's sports and just sci-fi sci and fantasy that, that I'm going to be seeing here. So say for example, I want to watch the ICC World T20, which is actually, okay, the highlights of the ICC World T20. That's playing right now, 3 to 4 a.m. So I can hit watch now and I point this at my setup box. It's going to switch it to that channel. That channel. When, then it asks you to select your TV. You just select the brand that you have. It's got a lot of brands set up hit power and if your tv turns on yes it works or you go on to code number two that's basically how it works so basically you can set up rooms and remote controls for those rooms so if you have a different tv uh, in your living room and another one in your bedroom you can actually set up remote controls per room so you just tap on this that takes you to the remote and uh, hit this button over here this one and you can add extra devices if you wanted to so dvd players blu-ray players av receivers streaming media players and air conditioners are supported uh this is not a learning remote as in you cannot just i mean in, sorry the ir is over here anyway you cannot just get another remote if there is no code available and uh, learn from it uh, the way LG or HTC's uh, remote uh, remote controls work but then again uh, Samsung has an extensive list of uh, codes that are programmed into the smart remote functionality so you're going to be finding codes for almost any brand that you have and then let's get to my files this is something I really love about Samsung they have their own file manager they, and they've been improving it right now it can sort stuff uh, it can classify stuff based on the recent files that you've accessed images videos audio documents and downloaded apps if you don't want any of this you can just jump into device storage or you can jump into your sd card storage and you can move folders just tap and hold it hit the three dot menu and you can copy move rename zip it add shortcuts detail and check out the details of the folder and so on so it's a pretty nice app and then when you get your phone you get a widget over here galaxy essentials tap on it and that'll take you to the samsung app store where samsung has a set of apps that it uh, believes you should have on the phone but i've probably left it out because last time a galaxy phone shipped with less than 10 uh, gigs of internal storage that is usable uh, internal storage there was a lot of negative publicity so to kind of avoid that they've left all these apps out you can actually download them from here the optical reader group play i mean if you're into it uh if you use any of these you might find it useful so uh, and then you've got galaxy gifts so a few uh, uh what do you say a, f a few apps with offer specific to your galaxy phone uh can be found here and talking about the widgets another widget that worth mentioning is the magnifier so just tap on it and you can actually have anything here so let me pull this in and it kind of magnifies stuff All right so you can just zoom in just to quickly uh, read stuff just to quickly read something in those cases where you just cannot find your glasses uh, it's pretty useful let's talk a bit about the sl tab so so you just enter your details when you get started 
and you can uh, it tra it basically tracks your step steps acts as a pedometer uh is the calories burned you can also log in the food that uh, you've consumed if you want to track the calories you've taken in as well additionally this time around we've got the heart rate sensor so going into the heart rate sensor hit okay now just put your finger over here and there you go it gives you your heart rate so and guys hitting the open apps key takes you to the screen where you can just slide to close apps or you can close all or you can hit this jump into active applications so if you have any apps running in the background you can end them and that will also show you the amount of uh, free ram you also have a kid mode built in this time around so again it's not installed by default you need to actually download it and install it it's about 56 megs so there you go this is the kids mode so you can set a pin initially so let's say i have it as one two three four and you can set individual profiles for individual kids so let's say kid a so you can select the applications that your child's allowed to use so i've got only one app here that i've installed so next finish that's cute anyway you see so you've got uh, a few different kind of icons you've got a restricted apps so you've got access to the camera with a bit less functionality you've got your voice recorder you've got a paint app so every time you get a new app over it appears in the form of a gift tap it uh, and the app gets revealed it's just a lot more kiddish a lot more cartoony in this mode the open apps key doesn't work and to exit it just hit this exit over here enter your pin and we are back to a normal mode so I guess that pretty much wraps up the series. Hope you guys found this series useful. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And for more videos like these, make sure you stay subscribed. So guys, we've put in a lot of time and effort to make these videos. So hope you can share it if you can. Uh, sharing a video just helps YouTube suggest it to more people. So, so help us get the word out. Share this video. Stay subscribed. And uh, I'll catch you soon in the next one. Till then, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.